Okay, everybody, a little bit of a recap of what we talked about today. Um, so again, what we're trying to do is write unique quadratic functions. And there are really three forms. Uh, the first form we have is vertex form y equals a x minus h squared plus k. We've seen that where h and k are the vertex. Of course, this is in your notes. Our second form is root form, which um, root form is our y equals a times x minus r1 for first root, x minus r2 for second root, okay? And our third one we're going to talk specifically about tomorrow more than others, and that is our standard form. That's our y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We'll do more of this tomorrow, okay? So we looked at this first example, and we realized that really if all you have is one point, it is not enough because there's many, many, many different parabolas that could go through that. You could have a parabola that looks like this. You could have one that looks like this. You could have one that looks like this. There's so many different ways to draw this parabola, so you need another point. So at minimum, if you have the vertex, at a minimum, you need at least two points if you have a vertex. So George and Pat worked out their form. They had a vertex given to them of 4, 8. They both plugged the 4 and the 8 into vertex form. 4 and 8. There it is. But they both made up an A. I mean, we don't know what the A value of A is. It could be anything. So they're both technically correct. Who has the right answer? answer? They both do. Both because we need another point. So then we looked at this first worked example, and we were given another point. You have to have another point. So we realized we're going to use vertex form. They use vertex form right here. They used f of x or y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. And we know the vertex has an h and a k with the 5 in for the h, the 2 for the k. But that wasn't enough. So we need more information to find the value of a. So we found more information. We have a point. It goes through 4, 9. 9 is a y value. 4 is an x value. We simplified. We got 1, negative 1. We squared negative 1. We got 1. We subtracted 2. We got a to be 7. If a is 7, we put the 7 right back into its form. So we rewrite the equation as 7 times x minus 5 plus 2, because that's my vertex. Okay, good. Then, on the next one, we're given roots. So we had our root form, which is, again, I'll rewrite y equals a times x minus r1, that's our first root, x minus r2, that's our second root. Um, we put our negative 2 in for r1, and we got a double negative. You guys see the double negative, right? It makes a positive 2. Put the 4 in for our other root, 1 minus 4, we simplified that. So 1 minus minus 2 is a 3, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Now we need another point. So we take our 1, 6, we plug our 6 in for y, and our 1 in for both x's, for both x's, for both x's. And we finally simplify and we get a to be negative 2 thirds. Since the value of a is negative 2 thirds, we just put it in for the value of a, and we have x plus 2, x minus 4, okay? And then we just talked about when do we pick certain things. Um, this one we'll talk about specifically tomorrow. Um, on this one, um, we will talk about this one specifically because they both have threes, threes, threes. Um, this one you can do, we'll talk about this one again tomorrow. This one we can do by intercepts or roots. Uh, this one has its roots. Um, this one, that's a vertex because of maximum height. So we could use vertex form. Okay, uh, the homework we did is I had the kids do, um, from page 56, I had them do the A, B, and C. And C took some work. That's what we're going to talk more specifically tomorrow. Okay, that's all I have. See everybody tomorrow.